So, somebody in Congress just got a hold of the golden gun and the license to print. Wow, stimulus check well spent. So the largest economic stimulus or bailout, depending on how you want to look at it, was just passed in the House of Representatives with 208 votes versus 199. And the entire HEROES Act consists of close to 2,000 pages worth of legislation. Kind of makes you wonder what else is in that bill, right? Well, this is exactly what this video is going to talk about because I read the entire 1,815 pages worth so that you wouldn't have to. No, I didn't. Ain't nobody got time for that. But I did gather all the information into this one video so that you wouldn't have to go looking and some of the things that people are not talking about and how it affects you. This video took a lot of work and research, so please watch this. So we take a straw and we will shrink it down right into an origami heart. Oh, how cute is that? Because I don't know how to make an origami thumbs up button, so smash that like button and whatever you do, don't play that back in slow motion. Otherwise, you will still not know how that was done. Now, fun fact about the HEROES Act. It will cost around $3 trillion to get the economy going. And just for comparison, when I graduated high school in 2008, that cost us around $700 billion to bail out the banks. And so far, the CARES Act has cost us around $2 trillion, which is three times as bad as 2008. But now, we've got the granddaddy proposal of all of them, where altogether, America this year alone could spend as much as $5 trillion, which is literally seven times times worse than 2008. Who cares? It is not my money does not concern me. And that makes sense, except it does matter and here is why. Here's another way to look at it. The actual impact that 2008 had on each American, you and me, was estimated by economists at $70,000 throughout our entire lifetime in the form of inflation, stagnant wages, and loss of productivity from which we are still recovering. Even though, yes, we didn't actually pay $70,000 to the government of our own money from our own pocket, but that money was stolen from our future selves and spread out relatively evenly each and every single year throughout our entire life. And even though it's not something we can see, it's definitely something that we can feel. So even though it may seem nice to get all of these stimulus checks, the dollar is slowly losing value piece by piece. And even though you can't see the damage, it's already there. You just gotta look a little closer. Yeah, that one's free. Go and practice that in front of the mirror. <laughs> one of my favorites. So now let's take a closer look at what's inside the HEROES Act that just passed inside the House of Representatives and how this will affect us in the future. Let's begin. Hi everyone, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you had a great weekend. And let's just start with the HEROES Act, starting with the things that people are most interested in first. Now by now, most of us should have received our $1,200 stimulus checks. And of course, there's talks of another one. There's talks of a $2,000 stimulus check. But what no one is talking about is the real cost of doing this. And in 2020 alone, the CARES Act is estimated to cost $49,000. That's how much the government is projected to spend in 2020 alone per household. And all of this, of course, comes in the form of inflation and lost income. So $75 billion will be put towards public health and social services emergency fund. Try saying that five times fast for the Yorona testing and containment measures. Now this includes treatment and contact tracing. And if you're not sure what contact tracing is, because I didn't know what it was, it's not actually that. Sounds like it though. What it is, is the government spending a ton of money to keep track of every single person that you've come in contact with to make sure that you didn't get them sick or vice versa. Now the good part about this is containment and potentially free treatment. The bad news is, who's calling me right now? 1984's George Orwell, who's that? Ah, <laughs> wrong number. And another $45 billion will be given to the Student Loan Debt Forgiveness Program, which suspends all payments and all interest on all student loans until September 2021 to all of those who are deemed economically distressed so basically, all college kids. Now, all this means is that you don't have to pay back your student loans and you won't be penalized until September 31st, 2021, but you still have to pay back all of those loans. But in addition to that, you can get up to $10,000 forgiven if you can prove that you are economically distressed. And here's how you can prove that. 
<laughs> half kidding, but here's the screenshot. Just pause the video right here, and that's how you can actually prove it to them, or alternatively, just show them your MSG levels from eating all of those soups. $100 billion will be provided to the emergency rental assistance provision, which gives protection to low income people from being evicted from their homes. Now to be considered low income, you have to make less than 80% of the average of whatever the income is in your specific area. And that's gonna be provided by the secretary. Another $75 billion will be given to homeowners to protect them from foreclosure in case they can't make their payments on time. On one hand, that's good for renters like me, but on the other hand, for people who are trying to invest in real estate, I'm not so sure. That's why I love dividend investing and REITs. Another $200 billion will go towards support for frontline workers, including medical staff and first responders. There's another provision that also includes two weeks of paid sick leave and 12 weeks or three months of emergency paid leave for pretty much everyone if you meet certain criteria for which there are way too many to list. But basically, if you feel sick or you've been exposed or you've been diagnosed with symptoms related to the illness, then you can apply and then potentially get paid to just leave and then take it easy. But I will leave all the links in the description below the video for more info. And 15% more money will be given towards SNAP, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, which is a fancy way of saying food stamps. Now this roughly translates to about $25 per person or $100 for a family of four. But in order to unlock this perk, you gotta meet special income requirements, which I'll show you on the screen right now. And based on my understanding of the bill, your stimulus checks and your unemployment benefits don't count towards your overall yearly income. So you can still receive those and still qualify and get those food stamps. So apply and I'll leave links in the description below the video to see if you qualify for your state. But whatever you do, just remember, hot foods need not apply. You can't go to a hot food place and just get your food. So the holy trinity, Taco Bell, In-N-Out, and Chipotle. This is a big one, $600 per week unemployment benefits extended until January 2021. That means if you don't have a job, you can get paid up to $2,400 a month to be incentivized to just stay home and binge watch Too Hot to Handle. <laughs> Seriously, I can't believe I watched that show and I actually finished it. Whatever you do, don't even start it. And it's this part of the bill, this extension, that a lot of Republicans have an issue with because it's argued that this plan doesn't properly phase out these payments. It just stops paying people cold turkey and it's gonna be very difficult for people to adjust when it comes time to stop receiving payments. And it's argued that this prevents the economy from fully restarting. But whatever you do, don't kill the messenger. I come in peace. And of course, everybody's favorite stimulus checks, because according to the HEROES Act, we're gonna get a second round of $1,200 stimulus checks. But wait, there's more, because for each child that you have, you can get paid $1,200 for up to three children's. And so one family can get paid $6,000 per month, and that's not even counting the $600 per week in unemployment benefits. That's very generous, and that's another huge problem that Republicans have with this bill. And speaking of potentially bad ideas that are hidden inside the bill, here are some things that are less talked about that both Democrats and Republicans don't really like that is hidden inside the bill. Let me share with you some of the more contentious ideas about the HEROES Act. Number one, cash payments to illegal immigrants. That's right, if you're an illegal immigrant, you will be eligible for not only the next stimulus checks if we ever get sent them, but also the previous round of stimulus checks that were sent out in April, depending on the income levels. And the reason they did this is because they felt that the CARES Act excluded a lot of mixed immigration status households, meaning if you paid your taxes on time and you were a citizen, but your spouse was an undocumented worker, then there was a potential that you did not receive your $1,200 stimulus checks and your $500 stimulus check for kids 17 and younger, and that hurt a lot of households. As a result, people argued that the CARES Act discriminated against households where someone was married to an undocumented worker, and this was a way for the House to fix that issue. Page 1762 of the bill mandates that all ICE detainees, that is, immigrants who committed a crime that were put in jail by the Immigration Customs Enforcement 
content shall be released if they do not pose a direct and immediate threat to the general public. Because remember, a crime doesn't actually have to be a violent offense. It could be something simple like overstaying your visa. Also included in the bill are new standards for free privileges of having phone access so that people can actually talk to their families. Because right now, due to the illness, no one is able to visit those detention centers. And number three, illegal immigrants that are considered essential workers will be protected from being deported. And on top of that, they'll be given the green light to work for these companies without these companies actually being penalized for hiring them in the first place. And remember at this point, pretty much anyone can be considered an essential worker. And the fear here is that these illegal immigrants will take our gerbs because these people will take our jobs at a lower pay scale. But before you get too upset about this one, just remember the fact that 25% of farm workers, people that are essential to keeping us fed, 25% of them are undocumented according to Pew Research, and 8% of them are in the services sector. So they play a major role in contributing to the economy. And all immigrants that wanna to come to the US in order to practice medicine, especially as it relates to the illness, will be given expedited visas so they can come here to practice medicine and fulfill the shortage of hospitals and to fulfill their ultimate destiny of living up to their parents or otherwise become failures. <laughs> but believe it or not, 17% of all healthcare workers are actually immigrants and more than one in four doctors are immigrants as well. And you know it's true, especially if you're Asian, especially if you're Eastern European, Russian like me, we all have to be doctor or lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so this statistic makes perfect sense to me. And at number five of this bill, unauthorized immigrants who have no healthcare coverage will also qualify for treatment, free testing, and free vaccines. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, good job. You probably left your phone in the bathroom, but welcome back. And I will say that throughout my childhood, I experienced a lot of things regarding illegal immigration and undocumented workers. And even though my dad came here legally and he did pay his taxes, my family did what we had to do in order to survive. And it was a very difficult time. And I remember my parents fighting about their citizenship every single day and they tried so hard to get it. And the government makes it so difficult for immigrants to get their citizenship, even if they go through the proper legal channels because of all the red tape, the inefficiency and the bureaucracy of a non-functioning government. It's so difficult. So I understand the outrage that is caused for supporting undocumented or illegal immigrants, but I can't exactly criticize it because I would be a hypocrite and I've been in that situation before. But if there's any one thing I want you to understand, it's that just because someone is illegal or undocumented does not necessarily always mean that those people don't pay taxes. And from my personal experience, most people that come here to the US are here to work hard and here to make an honest living. They're not here to take advantage of the system, generally speaking. But what do you think of this bill? Is it something you want passed? Just remember, this has only passed in the House of Representatives, which is largely controlled by Democrats. It's more than likely DOA or dead on arrival in the Senate, which is controlled by Republicans. So more than likely, it won't even reach Donald Trump to reject. But if it did, imagine if he took that bill and just ripped it up like Nancy Pelosi did the State of the Union address. Yeah, karma can be so petty, just my style. In all seriousness, on one hand, I think it's great that there's a potential for another round of $1,200 stimulus checks or $2,000 stimulus checks. I think it's sorely needed for a lot of families, but on the other hand, it's gonna cost us so much money in the future in the form of inflation that I can practically physically hear myself complaining about the price of milk in the future. Milk is $12 a gallon. Did you hear that? You're gonna fart yourself to death. Wait, what? Now, does that ever happen to you though? No, me neither. Don't forget to get your two free stocks, one from Webull by funding your account, $100, get one free stock valued up to $1,400. Get your other free stock from Robinhood, that's two free stonks that get you started with investing for free. And follow me on Instagram where you can see me doing weird stuff like this, where I've pretty much started to attach my self-worth to social media. <laughs> no, but don't do that. Thank you all so much for watching my crazy silliness. Love you all. See you back here on Monday and Friday. Bye-bye.